Closing, make up that winning physique. You're a winner, whether you win or lose. It's women's amateur bodybuilding at its very best, and the junior nationals are on the line. Oh, a feeling I'll never forget. Very exciting. It's no time to reflect. The weigh-ins are over. It's showtime in Red Bank, New Jersey, as ESPN presents the Showdown at the Shore, the 1991 NPC Women's Junior National Bodybuilding Championships. We welcome you to the Count Basie Theater in Red Bank, New Jersey, for the Showdown at the Shore, the 1991 NPC Women's Junior National Bodybuilding Championship. Hi, I'm Bob Papa, along with former Ms. Olympia 1983 Carla Dunlop, former competitor and now body shaping trainer Rick Valente. Glad you can join us for tonight's competition. Carla, let's start with you. These are young women trying to forge their way into the world competition. What kind of anxiety are they feeling coming into tonight? Bob, they're feeling plenty of anxiety. Let me tell you, that nervousness, though, if they're smart, they'll use it to do the best they can on stage because they know it's a one-shot deal. This is where it counts, so they've got to make it count this time, this time only. All right, Carla mentions that there is anxiety, nervousness. How does a competitor control that backstage before they come up? Well, a lot of people do handle that differently, but hopefully what they're doing backstage is going through their routine in their mind. You know, studying the routine, hitting the breaks to the music, and so when it comes time to come out here and showtime, they'll be ready. All right, Rick will be keeping a close eye backstage. Carl and I will man the microphones, and we'll come back after this timeout with the opening of the 1991 NPC Women's Junior National Bodybuilding Championship. And we welcome you to Red Bank, New Jersey, the Count Basie Theater for the 1991 NPC Women's Junior National Bodybuilding Championship. Bob Papa along with Carla Dunlop. Carla, what will we see tonight in the three weight classes? Well, we're looking at women who are going to, in this first weight class, be very light with a fair amount of muscle on their frames for their height. As we get into the middle weight classes, we're going to look at little taller women who are running into the 125 pound range. And if finally our heavyweights, are your big women, women who are hitting up into the 175-pound weight range. Right here we have Heidi Davenport, a woman who stands only five feet tall and weighs about 114 pounds. But you can see by her development that she, it's easier for her to look like she has a large amount of muscle on her frame. She's known for her thighs. Heidi Davenport from the Buckeye State of Ohio to MC Hammer's Prey, and she talks about what she likes best about her body. My best body part would probably be my legs. Because of their shape and size, they aren't quite as cut as they need to be, but hopefully someday they will be. Um, I like to stick to hack squats and leg presses and leg extensions. I usually just do those three exercises for my legs. I don't usually do squats. Well, Carla, Heidi Davenport has a certain look to her, doesn't she? She sure does, but it's unusual she doesn't do squats. It's considered a mainstay of most bodybuilders. However, she has a gymnast's look, a very petite woman with a lot of muscle on her frame. She is coming to the end of her routine. It has been a solid performance. Most certainly. From St. Clairsville, Ohio, Heidi Davenport. And now up, Linda Pimentel. She is from Malden, Massachusetts. Now, she's only 100 pounds. Does that make a difference? 100 pounds, but with her height, it looks very good on her frame. I would say, in her case, she's a little straight up and down. All right, Rick Valenti is backstage, and he's with Heidi Davenport. Rick? Hi, I'm here with Heidi Davenport. Heidi, that routine was incredible. Did you do that? Yes, I did that myself. Uh -huh. And the music? I picked that out myself. I really like ma uh, rap music, and my boyfriend does, too. He helped me pick that out. Well, that was incredible. Back to you, Bob. All right. Thank you very much, Rick. Now, Heidi made reference to rap music. Linda is taking a totally different approach here with her music selection. Your music has to fit your personality and the way you feel like moving. Here, Linda's using something of a mix. All right. Linda Pimentel from Malden, Massachusetts. And our next competitor, Laura Mudrack. She is from Minnesota. She's even lighter, 99 and a half pounds. Doesn't look like 99 and a half pounds. She tends to be a little bit light in her calves, but overall she's got good muscular balance. Most of the top women will have that good hard muscularity. Is it important for bodybuilders to watch videotapes of themselves to see exactly where they need to improve? I think that's critical. 
one of the things you can't tell when you look at yourself is just how you're going to appear to other people. And by utilizing the VCR, you can get a, the same view that a judge is going to see. Laura's a little soft in the hips, but has an excellent back, good belt development, and is actually using her music very well. Mentioned she's from Minnesota. She comes near the end of her routine. Well thought out performance. She really is moving well, and I'd say that she looks like she's enjoying herself, and that's very important. You don't want to look like you're tense or you're thinking about your routine. Does it help if the crowd is into it a little bit more? Oh, sure. That gets you going on stage, too. Just another point, though, about her physique. Her legs need to be a little more separated as she comes to the end of her routine. All right, Laura Mudrack. We mentioned the crowd, and it should be kind of juiced here because from New Jersey, Peggy Schoolcraft is up next. Of course, this competition here in Red Bank, New Jersey. This is what we call ultra ripped. Uh, Peggy has probably been dieting like a fiend for the last couple of weeks coming into the show. And that creates a more defined look, correct? Most certainly, but they're trying to get away from the ultra-ripped look because it tends to look a little too hard. Peggy Schoolcraft performing in front of her fellow New Jerseyans, and she has a lot of advice on the sport, and she talks about it for beginners and how they should get involved. Take it slow, work out, watch your body. Don't, I mean, a lot of people like, they, you know, they touch a dumbbell and they want to compete. And that's fine too, but you're going to get your knocks. I mean, just take your time, you know, work out hard, be consistent, don't get, you know, sidetracked, and, and you have to have a lot of discipline. Next up, Merle Ertung from Sterling, Virginia. This is an upbeat routine. This is the kind of routine I like to see. Somebody who really uses a lot of uh, diversity. She's showing her physique, but she has to be careful to hit hard poses. Otherwise, they're considered all transitions. Is that just creating possible more headaches for yourself? Well, it's actually hard for the judges to watch and to critique your physique. Meryl Ertung. Oh, well, we saw Peggy Schoolcraft before, and she is backstage with our own Rick Valente. Rick? Hi, I'm here with Peggy Schoolcraft, and Peggy, you are ripped. I have to know, what did you eat, and for how long did you eat it? A million dollar question. <laughs> um, pretty much egg whites and yams for about at least the last month, and then fish this week. <laughs> well, you def it worked. You look, you look very, Thank very you ripped. Lot. Good luck tonight. Thanks a lot. Back to Carla and Bob. Well, Rick said the same thing. She looked very ripped, and now the moment of truth. Who gets the trophy? I'll tell you something. I really thought that uh, Schoolcraft, with her ripped look, would probably be in the top of the, the class. Um, but you never know. You never know what the judges are going to go for. goes to Laura Mudrick. Laura? Laura Mudrick gets fifth place. What is it like standing up there and waiting for this announcement? Nerve-wracking. But most of your veteran competitors know pretty much Linda where they're going to end Pimentel. up. Linda? Linda Pimentel gets fourth place. So we have three more to go. We're coming down to three, two, and one. This is the real hard place goes to Merrill Air Tunic. Merrill Air Tunic gets third place. That surprised you a bit, huh? Yeah. And I thought her symmetry place. was enough to move her up into second place. We can place. bring the trophy, Steve, to Peggy Schoolcraft, second. Ooh. Heidi Davenport, well, lightweight winner. The New Jersey fans, not all that pleased. But Heidi Davenport is the winner in the lightweight division in the 1991 Junior National Bodybuilding Championships as this crowd looks on here in New Jersey. And backstage, Heidi Davenport will hook up with Rick Valente. Obviously, you're very, very happy, so I'm not going to ask you how you feel. Happy. But tell me, what is next for you? Um, well, gee, it was possibly the Nationals. Um, the Nationals North American USA, probably a show like that when I think I'm ready. Well, whatever it is, I'm sure you'll do very, very well. You look great. Congratulations. Thank you. I can't believe this. Back to you, Bob and Carla. All right. Thank you very much. 
Well, Peggy Schoolcraft didn't win in the lightweight division, but she still comes up a winner. John Hecht is here to give her the Weeder Award as the best poser. On behalf of Weeder Health and Fitness and Richard Bizarro, Peggy, I'd like to present you with the Weeder Best Poser Award for the 1991 NPC Women's Junior National Bodybuilding Championships. Congratulations, Peggy. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank Weeder on behalf of this award. Um, this really means a lot to me because I love to pose. I just love to pose. I love to turn music on, crank it up, and just hit some poses. So it means a lot to me. I put a lot into my routine, practiced it, and I'm really glad they appreciated it. <laughs> All right, our lightweight winner, Heidi Davenport, about to collect some more hardware. The GNC Symmetry Award, here's Jack Clark. On behalf of General Nutrition and Bill Watts, I'd like to present you with GNC's Most Symmetrical Bodybuilder Award for the 1991 NPC Women's Junior Championships. I realize that I wasn't quite as thick or as hard as some of the other women today, but I'd really like to thank GNC for noticing my symmetry. Thank you very much. All right, Heidi Davenport, we still have the middleweights to come and a word from GNC and its superstores. And it is middleweight time as the 1991 NPC Junior National Bodybuilding Championships continue. Linda McGon is up first. Linda is from Hudson, New Hampshire, 123 pounds. Talk about the weight classification. The weight classification here actually tops out at 125 and a half. And I'll tell you something, these women will look huge until you start seeing the heavyweights. Linda is from a very uh, weak area, supposedly in the United States, but now with everything being very uh, open about bodybuilding, you'll find that you get tremendous talents from every corner of the uh, nation. Is that true, that there are hotbeds for bodybuilding and not? Yeah, most of it's coastal. Most people think of the West Coast as being the home of bodybuilding, but there are strength on the East Coast, too. However, like I said, now you've got publications and you've got TV. Everybody's turning. What do you think of Linda's performance so far? A little sedate. She's uh, got good muscle size. Uh, very hard. Everything is balanced. Great calves. Good back. But uh, her routine is lacks a little energy. And what could that really be the cause of? Is it uh, choreography? It's usually choreography. She just needs to pump up and add a little drama into it. So Linda McGon of Hudson, New Hampshire, coming to the end of her routine. And she heads backstage, and she will be joined by Rick Valenti. Hi, I'm here with Linda McGlon. Linda, what we're all wondering is, how much aerobics do you do, and for how long before the show do you do it? Um, pretty much year-round I do aerobics, just about every day. But up um, the last probably 8 to 12 weeks, I did about two hours a day. Right, in, in half-hour segments, or...? 40, 45-minute segments, probably, you know. Well, it paid off. You look great. Thank you. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Okay, back to Bob and Carla. All right, thank you very much, Rick Valente. As he points the finger at us, we point the finger at Tracy Gillespie. She is from Johnson City, Tennessee, 123 and a half pounds. Tracy's got a beautiful body. She's got nice thigh sweep, a little flat on the calves, and uh, upper body's great. She's projecting a lot of confidence. I'm not thrilled with the choice of her color on her suit. It's a little too much white in it for her coloring. She needs something richer. Can you explain what the reasoning is behind that? Because the color of your suit can make a difference in how your physique appears. You can change the color of your suit and actually make your body stand out, or you can wear the wrong color and make the eye go to places you don't really want it to. Is that a situation where uh, videotapes will help as well? We talked about looking at posing. That's also a situation? Oh, sure. Sure, if she had looked at this with a black background, she'd worn a rich color suit, I think you'd be able to pay a little more attention. Not that her physique is, is falling back in any way, form, or form, but she, that color is just too pale for the richness of her skin. What's her strength? Her strength is her overall balance. I mean, she has really no real weak spots. I would say she might be a slightly heavy in, heavier in the thighs. All right, Tracy Gillespie from Johnson City, Tennessee. 
And that was a good routine from her. And now up from Union City, New Jersey, Mauro Bajacin. Mauro's been in this for a while, so I think we're going to see a really outstanding routine from this lady. Now here, Mario um, has a kind of a thick waistline, but because her upper body and her legs are very well developed and very balanced, she can get away with it. Is that because of certain workout techniques or is it Mother Nature? That's Mother Nature. If, you're, if you've got a thick waist, you can pretty much draw the eye away from it by developing the lats. Sometimes it doesn't uh, work, but most times it does tend to give you more flair. This is a very dramatic routine. She's utilizing all of the emphasis points in her music, very strong, very good posing at those points. A lot of personality and drama in this. I call this applause getting. Give him a pause and let him think it's over. Does it sway the judges at all? Actually, her whole routine, because she's utilizing her music very well and she's putting a lot of personality and a lot of strength into it, is going to influence the judges. Plus, she's in critical condition. Good, strong abs, clear separation. She's using expressiveness. Mauro Bajakjin from Union City, New Jersey, gets a Good round of applause from the fans here in Red Bank, New Jersey. And now up, Denise Richardson out of New York City, 122 pounds. Denise comes out on that stage like a panther. She's used utilizing a lot of drama, too. Very controlled movement. Good balance. Emphasizing her upper body. Legs are a little weak. All right, Rick Valenti is ready backstage, and he's ready to talk with Maro Bajakjin. Thanks, Bob. Maro, I'm going to ask you how to pronounce your last name. Okay, Bajakjin. <laughs> okay, I was close. But listen, that routine was very, very entertaining. It was, it was a joy to watch. It gave me chills. Now, you worked that. You actually worked the music. You hit the brakes. You did that yourself? Sure. Me and my training partner and boyfriend <laughs> worked work? on it. Thank very entertaining. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Back to Bob and Carla. All right. Rick and Beverly Gerard from Jameson, Pennsylvania. Next up. Beverly's a perfect example of the taller competitor who is uh, really, if you look at her frame, she's got a lot of muscle on her frame, but because of her height, it tends to look a little leaner than the other women in her class. Let's say Tracy, who is only 5'2", puts 125 pounds on that frame, whereas uh, Tracy is up there at 5'7", and has only got five pounds more. Are you saying that it's uh, better to be shorter, almost? It's easier to make it look like you have a lot of muscle on your frame when you're shorter. When you're taller, you actually have to put on more muscle to make it look like it, it's proportional to your frame. Actually, you know, on the pro level, her type of frame is very uh, popular. You'll see people like Anya Schreiner, who has very tiny, tiny waistline, who really doesn't have as much muscle as many of the shorter people, but then it looks wonderful, it looks very symmetrical. Well, she comes to the end of her routine, does Beverly Gerard, your impressions? Uh, Needs a little more muscle on the upper body. Legs are good. Calves are good. Um, has a great frame. I'm not, uh, not that displeased with it. And Beverly Gerard from Jameson, Pennsylvania finishes up. And now it's time for the okay, trophy Ron, presentation can, at this time, in the middleweight bring our division. Fifth place trophy in the middleweights too. Ooh, this is Denise going to be real Richardson. tight. I like Bajakian and Gillespie. Well, Denise Richardson of New York City comes up with In fifth place. place. Middleweight, Beverly Giroux. There's Beverly. that uh, quite, not quite enough muscle for that frame. 
Right now and it's a little bit tougher here. Three, oh, this is this is where it's really bad because these two women or three women that are left Linda here Linda. Huh? trying to second guess the judges. Well, Linda McGon comes up with third place. Who's it going to be, everyone, Morrow or Tracy? I think Tracy has the more symmetrical body, as I said before. Morrow tends to be a little thick in the waist. Second place, Junior Nationals, Morrow Bajorkian. So Tracy Gillespie is the, the winner middle. out of Johnson Moving City, Tennessee. Your winner, and she is the winner Tracy in the middleweight Gillespie. division. Tracy in the middle. So Tracy wins in the middleweight division. Had a very good routine, had the best overall okay, look, and she's also the most improved. And it's Roger, time for the Cybergenics Most Improved Roger. Award, and here's Franco Santoriello. On behalf of Cybergenics, Scott Chinnery and Marty Herman, I'd like to present this plaque to Tracy, the Cybergenics Most Improved Bodybuilding Award at the 1991 NPC Junior National Championships. Congratulations, Tracy. I'd like to thank Cybergenics for this most improved bodybuilding award. Also, I'd like to say special thanks to Casey Murphy in Dallas, Texas for all of his help. Also, I'd like to thank my family and friends back in Tennessee. Thank you. All right, as the middleweight athletes file off, we're going to pause for a commercial and a word from Cybergenics of the effectiveness of bodybuilding. Twin Lab is a current leader in sports nutrition in the industry today, and being that as it may, we like to be involved in top-level amateur NPC events and top-level professional IFBB events. So our association with both, both federations has been really pretty strong over the last uh, few years, as a matter of fact. Well, a lot goes into competition, and one of the most important things is good sportsmanship. And here's the Twin Lab Award and Lori Granis. On behalf of Twin Lab and Neil Blackman, I'm pleased to present Morrow with his Good Sportsmanship Award at the 1991 Women's Junior National Championships. Congratulations. Thank you, Lori. I'm happy to be here, and I'd like to thank Twin Lab and all their fine products, and I think this award is wonderful, and uh, thanks. Carla Dunlop, talk about the NPC event. The Junior Nationals was brought about so that there was a place for people to compete before they got to the national level. All right, let's hear from the winners from the past two years. Oh, a feeling I'll never forget. Very exciting and okay, right. motivating. Encouraged me to go on okay, and prepare for nationals. I won the Junior Nationals in 1989, and that was probably one of the, the best feelings uh, of all the shows that I won because it was the first national show. Um, you know, I had been in Michigan for about four, the first four years of my career, and that was the first time that they had, the national judges had seen me, so that was really very important, very significant uh, competition for me. All right, Linda Murray, speaking of her, is our guest poser. And Carla, this is a treat for the fans here. This is a treat for me, too. I am in awe of Linda Murray. She is the new feeling in bodybuilding now. Size, everything. This woman is going to go into her next Olympia and just blow the socks off a lot of people. She was an unknown and a former junior national champion. So you think she's going to win again this year, huh? I'm keeping my fingers crossed. <laughs> Well, I guess we see the difference just in her routine here and what she's doing and her size, the difference between the amateurs and the professionals. Well, the professionals are more show. The amateurs really think more on a basis of competition. The professionals have to be out there. They do a lot of exhibitions. They get paid. And this woman has size that most of the guys I know of don't want to stand next to her. <laughs> I sure wouldn't. <laughs> But you see, this is what they're looking at, the pro level, extreme size with the shapeliness. And of course, she's presenting a very feminine image with her uh, routine. And so you have that beautiful package. This woman's also a former professional cheerleader with major football. So you can see that in much of her stepping and her presentation as far as her expressiveness. Well, she knows how to put a routine together. Linda Murray. Last year's Ms. Olympia and a junior national champion. We have more from Red Bank, New Jersey, including the heavyweights after this timeout. And we start off this heavyweight competition with Abby Krupp. She is from Texas, 140 pounds. 
the average height of these women, Bob, is about 5'6". So you're going to see women averaging about 140 pounds, and their muscle is just impressive. What do you think of Abby so far? Abby's got great legs. She's got good upper body, particularly her upper back. Abs are very crisp, chest is crisp, a lot of good separation. Um, she looks a little as if she's not quite concerned about her routine, not a lot of expressiveness. As the judges watch one poser after another, how do they begin to differentiate? That's the toughest part of this judging. Routines, because you can't call out comparisons or anything, you have to look at the, the physique that's being presented and judge it that way. But you're also looking at the same elements that you would in, let's say, floor exercise and gymnastics. You're looking at how well they extend the creativity of their routine, the diversity of their movement. If they're doing 15 double biceps, obviously their routine isn't going to be as interesting as someone who really shows off their physique. It seems that uh, to have a little more dance in a routine would make it more effective. Not necessarily. I've, I've seen people, let's say, like referring to Linda Murray, put together a routine that is a good mix of dance, of good hard muscle shots, and beautiful transitions with a little mime. The creativity of how you present your physique has a lot to do with how well you do in this routine. Abby Crump of Euless, Texas, 140 pounds. And getting ready to take the stage now, Mary Massetti. She is from New York City, 135 pounds. I think we're in for a very moody routine here. She is probably the second woman I've seen tonight that really looks rock hard. And you see all the feathering lines down her pecs in the front, her chest. You can see a lot of vascularity here. And good hardness through her legs and uh, her calves. How do they get themselves ready for the competition to have that look? Because it's obvious that some of the posers, some of the athletes have had that and others definitely haven't. Yeah, contrary to popular belief where you have to starve yourself to death, the new concept in nutrition is to eat and to feed the muscles. So when a, a competitor is off-season, they're eating and they're feeding themselves. But as they get closer to a contest, they balance the cutting back of carbohydrates slightly, and then they add them back in. So it makes the muscle fill out and bind enough water to, to hydrate the muscles. What about Mary's routine at this point? Very slow, very controlled. She's showing all of her high points. I think she's hiding her floor. I haven't seen any so far. Um, it's okay. I still like the more dramatic type of routine. Almost seems like the performer lull themselves. Yeah. But, you know, this kind of routine doesn't... The audience is reacting, but I like to see something where you get the audience going, too. Because that always helps you. All right, we started it off with Abby Krupp, and this is Mary Massetti of New York City, and she is in the heavyweight division, and she heads backstage, and she'll be joined by our own Rick Valente. Hi, I'm here with Mary Massetti from Manhattan. Mary, I understand you for your doctorate. Mm -hmm. In physiological psychology, and I'm teaching biology undergraduate at Hunter College right now. And, and so what time would you be training? I usually train in the evening, like around 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, and I just work it into my schedule. So I also have a part-time job at a doctor's office as right. a technician. So anybody can do it. It's just the want power. That's exactly. You just have to have schedule it into your day. If I think if a day is really scheduled, you can do it. Well, this you look great. Good luck tonight. Much. Thank you. Okay, let's All get right. back to the competition. All right, Rick, and before we do, we're going to take a timeout and more heavyweights after this. Stay tuned. Don't go away. We have more of the 1991 NPC Junior Nationals Women's Championships. And we went back to New Jersey, the 1991 NPC Women's Junior National Bodybuilding Championship. Bob Papa along with Carla Dunlop and Rick Valente. And we continue in the heavyweight division. Here's Candace Conroy. Candace from Mentor on the Lake, Ohio. 146 and a half. That's heavy. I think she's one of the heaviest women in this competition, in this weight class, that's made the top five or top... Uh, she's got a nice routine. It's moving nicely. One of the things I like to see is when the competitors are... And the hips. You can see there, she's loosening her hips. And the judge's consideration. 
because there's such a difference between her upper body and her lower body as far as hardness. Great back. What makes it so good? She's got nice, even development through the back back and the shoulders. She's holding a little bit of water, it seems. You can see that, that probably if she were to cut gill lines, but flexing those muscles is just as hard as doing the weightlifting in the gym. Change of pace there for Candace Conroy. That was a very good routine. Yeah, I thought it was uh, very personable. And Rovencio is now up from Marietta, Georgia, 144 and a half pounds. She has got some thigh thickness from the side. I noticed that most of the competitors we've seen so far, the ones that are in the top of their classes, have good thickness from the side of their thighs. This woman has the thighs, the calves, and then she's balanced by the caps of her delt, which is something that your eye takes in all the time, from the delts through the lats, down into a narrow waistline, into the sweep of the thighs, and on into the calves. If any one of those elements are missing, it tends to make you look weaker, as if there's some structural point missing. What's a key exercise and training program to have that look? A lot of people really depend on doing a strength routine for some period of time during their their uh, lead into competition and then they change they may change their routine to lighten up and work more on a, a, a lighter chiseling type of routine what do you think of her routine to this point it's kind of sultry and um, it's showing her body very well but I think it's not powerful enough for her physique however if it fits her personality and that's what she feels comfortable with presenting, then that's what she should. I guess a lot of it's mental. You know, you have to find that area in which you feel comfortable with to put your best effort forward. Oh, definitely. And Ravecchio. And now Tori Masanis from Princeton, New Jersey. She'll receive a nice hand from these fans here in Red Bank, New Jersey. And Tori makes her way onto the stage. She is 141 pounds. Ooh, very nice. And she's got beautiful calf development. Again, that's something that you really have to kind of be born with, because you know, if you don't have those calves, it sure takes a long time to build them into the, in the gym. She's a little blocky, though, through her midsection, so she's going to be marked down for that a little bit. Good and hard. Good tie-ins. Tori Masanis on stage now, and Rick Valenti is standing by backstage, and he's with our latest competitor, Annie Rovecchio. Hi, I'm here with Annie Rovecchio. Annie, that routine was very good. You own the stage. Did you have a dance background? No, I didn't at all. I Actually, I felt a little bit nervous about it because I didn't have any kind of dance background or gymnastics or anything. But I worked on it a lot. I was a little nervous, but well, I hope... very entertaining. Well, thank you. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about food. Mm -hmm. Okay, do, do the same type of diet as everybody else? Tuna, fish, baked potatoes, or... Well, kind of. I cheat a little here and there, but I basically do the same thing as everybody else does. And what about aerobic activity? I, I did a lot of aerobics this time for this contest. I started about seven months ago, did the Stairmaster like twice a day and just... And for how long would you do that for? A half hour? About a half hour, twice a day, and, and then I picked it up toward the end a little bit. Well, it paid off. You look great. Well, thank Good luck you. tonight. Thanks very Let's much. go back to the competition. All right, Tori Masanis finishing her routine on the stage. Rick worried about the food. <laughs> <laughs> of course, because you don't get much of it. <laughs> or I should take that back. You get a lot of it. You just don't get what you want. She's getting very expressive. Look at the separation in her thighs. She's got what we call uh, fingers, feathering up her thighs, which is extreme separation. Good thickness. She's just going to be marked down because her lats aren't wide enough and her waist is thick. From Princeton, New Jersey, Tori Masanis. And her fellow New Jerseyan fans give her a Good round of applause. Okay, we'll bring, bring back, and now we'll get set for the trophy presentation the in the heavyweight division. As our five competitors come up onto the stage. It should be interesting to see how this shakes down. 
I'm not sure about this one. I know that uh, all these women are, are very good. It is nice to be here. I'm going to wait okay, and see what the judges say. We're going to go five, four, three, two, one. So well, we'll start Nick, with fifth you can place. bring the fifth place to Tori Mazanis. Tori Mazanis from Princeton, New Jersey, fifth big round of applause. takes fifth place. Tori that surprises me because I thought she was very hard, but I guess the judges fifth really did mark it down on her symmetry. Place. And the, the fans don't like, like it, it now. <laughs> I think I would have placed Candace below uh, the fifth place winner. Congratulations. Candace gets fourth place. Candace, third place. Now here's where it gets real Heavyweight tough. Heavyweight Junior Nationals, Mary Mazzetti. All right, Mary Mazzetti third. from New York City gets third. Surprise. I, yeah, I don't agree with that one either. I thought that... Um, Provecio maybe should have gotten uh, Second. third. You can bring the trophy to Annie Revicio. Annie Revicio gets second. second place. That was a close call. In the middle, we've got to move our heavyweight champion, Abby Krupp. So Big Abby Krupp is the winner. That's in the a middle. close call. Um, either Krupp. one of those two women could have put up for first, but I think I would have gone with Krupp. And we'll have more of the Women's Junior National Bodybuilding Championships, including the pose down. And we welcome you back to the 1991 NPC Women's Junior National Bodybuilding Championships. It's time for the women's pose down. Heidi Davenport on the right of your screen, the lightweight champion, the middleweight Tracy Gillespie in the middle, and Abby Krupp on the left, your heavyweight champion. Carla Dunlop, explain what's going on right now. This is the judges' first time they're going to see these three women together on stage. The lightweight winner, the middleweight, and the heavyweight. Okay, and they're right. doing the same comparisons that Turn they would do the in pre-judging. They're going to take them through all of the Double compulsory poses, the checking their muscle development against each woman. And then they're going to take them through quarter turns, checking the symmetry and their overall balance. Now, okay, right now... Right. When you look at this, they Turn look pretty side, even, but as you stand here and you watch these women, one begins to differentiate, differentiate herself from the other. Which one is differentiating themselves to you? Okay, relax. Right now, my eye is kind of drawn toward the, the heavy and the middleweight, um, and that's because the heavyweight just Let's has that size. She's great. Turn. See the sweep of her thighs and her calves. Turn to your right. She's got a tiny waistline, good size to her shoulders, but the Let's middleweight seems to have all of those things, but slightly more refined. She's a little flatter in the, yeah, the, the thigh sweep to the right. outside, but she's got everything else. And the lightweight yeah, is obviously the at a disadvantage, Heidi Davenport. Okay. Well, Heidi, now, compared to these while, two, the looks, her thighs course. look a little overpowered. Um, and I think she's at a slight disadvantage the way she's holding her feet, because you can't really see her, the shape of her calves. This is the fun part for a competitor. This is where you get to show your best shots and you get to just really be competitive about this. The strategy here is to, to be the lead, to be the aggressor, and to show the judges that this is what you want. This is your last shot. Are we really seeing that from either of the, any of the competitors? It, they're not really competing, uh, it seems, to get center <laughs> stage. In my day, we used to throw each other off the stage, practically, because this was really a free-for-all. This is, has become much more sedate, partially because the judging panel really wanted to keep it very clean so that they could see the competitors. In the pro level, though, it gets rough up there, particularly with the men. The men are just, you know, elbowing each other and getting into the front and hanging off the edge of the stage, just throwing everything they got at the judges. Do you still see Abby Krupp right now as we take a look at her, the heavyweight with uh, the best look right now? or I like her look. Uh, I'm kind of torn between her and, and Gillespie. Thank you. She just looks a little disinterested, though. Well, let's see what the judges Giving thought. The overall, the overall pose down. For this evening's Junior National Women's Overall Championship. Remember, it's the lightweight, winner, middleweight, and heavyweight. Sky Riley. Sky? Oh. They're bringing in the former Sky junior national champion from last year, probably to present the trophies. Sandy Rinelli, the NPC Women's and the head of the NPC Women's uh, Judging Committee is going Sky to come up, Sandy Rinelli. This, that woman that just walked Judges across the stage, I believe, was last year's champion. The overall champion goes to the crowd was right. 
This is nerve-wracking. Tracy wins. I think it might have been because of her refinement. So Tracy Gillespie is the overall winner in the pose down. And she wins out of the middleweight division. Usually the heavyweights have the advantage, but as you can see, Tracy Gillespie, the overall pose down winner. And she will head backstage and talk with our own Rick Valenti. Hi, I'm here with the overall winner, Tracy Gillespie. Tracy, congratulations, you look great. Thank you. Let me ask you one question now. What is next? Uh, the National. Okay, this year? I'm not sure about hopefully. this year, hopefully. And uh, hopefully the Miss Olympia. Yes, one of these years. Well, you're very balanced. You have a great physique. Thank you. You know, very creative on stage, and you just look incredible. Thank you. Well, I hope we see a lot more of you. I hope so, too. Okay. All right. Back to Bob. All right, thank you very much, Rick. We'll hear from Rick and Carla as we wrap up this competition after this. You're watching ESPN, the Total Sports Network. Well, Carla, Heidi Davenport, the winner in the lightweights, Tracy Gillespie in the middleweights, Abby Krupp, the heavyweight winner. Let's talk about the heavyweights. You didn't necessarily agree with Abby Krupp being the winner in the heavyweights. No, I personally liked Rubicio and I believe it was Masite. I had them first and second. And I had Krupp in third because I felt that her hips and, and her lower back were a little soft. Okay, we talk about the heavyweights always having the edge when they went for the overall champion, but a middleweight is the winner, Tracy Gillespie. Oh, yeah. When I saw the, the weight class winners walk out, I thought it was Tracy right from the get-go. She possessed the hardness that I thought Krupp's was missing. Now, I think that her physique is a type that can go on to the pros, and I think that Krupp, too, could go on to the pros, but she needs to be just a little harder. Do these competitors have championship stuff? Yeah, I think they do. Well, this is the Junior Nationals, and from here, these women can go on to the Nationals, and if they win the Nationals, then they'll go to the World Amateurs. All right, Carla Dunlop, a pleasure. For Carla Dunlop here, and Rick Bob. Valenti, I'm Bob Papa. We hope you enjoy tonight's coverage of the 1991 NPC Women's Junior Bodybuilding Championships. And the 1991 NPC Women's Junior National Bodybuilding Championships was brought to you by General Nutrition Centers, the authority for the high-performance athlete. For all of your sports nutrition needs, stop in at GNC today. And by Twin Lab. Look for Twin Lab Bodybuilding Fuels at fine health food stores and gyms. This has been a presentation of High Bar Production in association with ESPN.